welcome to episode 52 of Bayou City Geeks. Uh, I'm your co-host, Bobby Bearhart, and with me as always to the man to my, I guess, left, right? Or upper left? <laughs> I don't I'm know. All right. Hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're still in this, in this lovely COVID uh, situation. Okay, so we have... We have a lot to talk about, but you know what? For this episode, we're going to just condense it to three nice little topics. And there are, I think this is one of the most polarizing films. Oh, most talked about. Most polarizing. So, uh, it, it's, it's going to be talked about for a very long time because it is. we're talking it's a what about, if, of course, the Justice League, you know, Snyder Cut. Exactly. What, which is kind of ironic because What If is associated with Marvel, which is another series that will be coming out on Disney Plus. You know, yes. But um, yeah, it, it's, I, and as I told you, you know, we were texting each other back and forth. Mm-hmm. And 10 minutes in, I, I loved it. 10 minutes in, I thought it was better than anything Whedon had put up on the screen. And, and the thing is, Josh Whedon is not a bad filmmaker. He's a very great creative. Yes. But the thing is, he was told, and, and I don't know if he was told to do this, you know, he was trying to make it more like, you know, Avengers, which you know, the JLA is not. And he tried to make them, you know, like, I guess as human as possible. But the whole thing about the Justice League is that they're comprised of, of very, very super powered people. Yes. So like, and if you go back to that Grant Morrison run back in 96, mm-hmm. he really defined the concept of the Justice League being gods. So there was a great when when Wizard was a magazine, and I still have a few of my Wizards, I might still have actually this one too. Uh, he compared the Just League at that time to uh, the Greek gods. Superman was yeah. Zeus, uh, Wonder Woman was Hera, you know, and and they are, they are gods. Um, yeah. Wonder Woman is based think, off Greek mythology. Exactly, I think. And so is Shazam too. I mean, Shazam has kind of like that Greek mythology. Literally, yeah. literally, the power yeah. of the gods. So I mean, the thing is, yeah, I mean. DC's always been different in that regard. The thing, the reason why I think Marvel was more relatable is because they made their characters human, you know, like the every like the everyman who just had something extraordinary happen to them. So there's a great documentary on Disney Plus called Behind the Mask. Yeah. And uh you know, the the one thing that everyone has always said about Marvel is the fact that they you know, Stanley and Jack and, and Ditko and Roy Thomas. The the and the whole crew the the smartest thing they ever did was put Marvel in New York City because because when you go to New York you can literally envision Spider Man swinging the Fantastic Four and they had the landmarks I mean if you play the Spider Man video game yeah you're gonna see I mean Madison Square Garden Radio City Music Hall yep. Broadway I mean it t- it literally takes you know, it, it is, it is cool New York. walking through Hell's Kitchen going hey you know what I'm home you know. Yeah. Uh, so I watched all four hours of Justice League. I didn't move. I did not do. I, I sat. watched. I watched maybe about an hour during my lunch break at work, and then I finished the other three at home. That that this was one of my birthday gifts. Was that I when it came out, I was allowed to watch it uninterrupted. Hmm. So I sat on the couch, and now Ashley, Ashley. Uh, did watch some of it, but she was like, like doing laundry or she was like cleaning or doing her homework. Uh, she was getting a little antsy around hour two and a half, three. <laughs> um, but I, dude, I didn't move. I did. I mean, I literally sat in the same spot, didn't move. And she brought me, she brought me, you know, uh, beer when I was watching it. Uh, but I, I know there are some issues people have had with it. Uh, one of them being, how is it that dark side uh, lost the anti-life equation on Earth? And how is it that he forgot where it was? That was one I read today. Yeah, that and then Martian Manhunter is like, nah, y'all fit, y'all, y'all got this. But, you know, when he comes back, you know, I'll, I'll jump well, in. It's, it's kind of like, you know, reve- I guess revealing himself to the public, you know, because like the thing is, even though Superman was kind of highly revered, he was still, you know, still some, you know, target yeah. of xenophobia. Well, and- so the thing is, plus, you know, there's not anything that looks like him. It's true. You know, so um, he has to hide himself. And I I was curious why, and Warner Brothers once again shot themselves in the foot with this because oh, I was reading yeah. today yeah. about how he wanted to have Jon Stewart be part of the league and they said, no, we have plans for him. 
Well, you but, have plans for everyone in this movie. But but here's the thing, though. I read an article about why that was a great decision because if you really think about it, they developed Harry Lennox's character more than they did. And then the thing is, people had already kind of guessed he must be Martian Manhunter. You know, and Harry Lennox was a great choice for him. Fantastic choice. And, uh, you know, he, um, you know, Harry Lennox, you know, of course, the Matrix, you know, reloaded in Revolutions. And, right. Uh, he's in um, Mo Money, too, with the Wayans brothers. But, um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's like, you know, they kind of, the payoff there is that, like, you finally get to see who, you know, his character is. I forget his name. is like Calvin, um, the general. The right. Arm, the, I, I, I can't think of his name either. I mean, you know, he gets to see finally, okay, who he is. And now, and like, just to bring in John Stewart would kind of be like, okay, who is this guy? Because there's a lot of people who still don't know. Casual movie, movie going audience would not know. Right. And, and you, to introduce seven, I mean, this is once again why <clears throat> I feel Warner Brothers shot themselves in the foot by having Snyder quickly get to the Justice League to try and catch up with Marvel because yeah. the, the original premise of Batman versus Superman wasn't Doomsday and wasn't killing Superman. It was Metallo. And then there'd be another movie to introduce Lex or have to introduce Doomsday, Death of Superman, and then Justice League, and then Justice League 2. It should have paid it off. I mean, but the thing is, I've said this before, and I don't care if this gets me in trouble. Warner Brothers is not a smart movie company. No, it's not. And, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you why, okay? Back here when... Marvel was really starting to to really, you know, go you right. Know, Spider Man and X Men and Blade and everything. DC was still sitting on the sidelines, mm -hmm. you know. And this is this was like you know, about a few years after Batman and Robin, you know, had just really tanked, and then they soured themselves on superheroes. And I was telling you know like my friend Brandon, and he was like, "What do you mean they're not a smart company? They got Harry Potter." I'm like, "That doesn't mean shit." You know, the thing is, they they made a lot of you know, dumb blunders, you know, just with the superhero franchises. You have Superman, you got Batman, you have the, they had the gamut of superheroes. Oh, yeah. They had, they had the film, film rights since Warner Brothers bought DC. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm just like, well, hold up, you know, you have all these characters under your umbrella, yet you're not doing anything with them. Well, look, look at it this way. Look at, look at it this way. After Batman and Robin bombed in what, 98? 97. 97. Okay, so 97. All right, so. In 2000, we get the X-Men. So from, two th from 2000 to 2008, 2007, okay, we get the Spider-Man trilogy, the X-Men trilogy, okay, and we get, what, one, one Batman and one Superman film. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Now, because yeah, we, got Batman begins and, we get Batman Begins in, what, 2005? All right, and we got Superman Returns in 06, 07? Yeah. That one did not do well, and then there was another, there wasn't another Superman for another seven years. Exactly. So now in 08, Marvel does Iron Man and knocks it out of the park. Oh, the gates open, yeah. Yeah, knocks it open. Okay, then Marvel goes, okay, we're going to do, they did uh, what? Uh, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Thor. Captain America. Mm -hmm. and now you, you have. Four of the Avengers that luckily no one owned except for Marvel. They went through Paramount. Yeah, Hulk was through, through uh, Universal. Universal, right. Warner Brothers could have easily go, oh, okay, well, cool. They went off with like, and and to... to they, they, they should be beating Marvel right now. They should have been beating them for, for a long time. Right, So, but here's the, here's the point I'm making. Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America were not... Uh, huge media darlings. No, comic book fans. Yeah, we loved them. I loved like John Cassidy's and and John Lee Re Nevers Captain America in two thousand one, two thousand two. Beautiful. However, no one really. I mean, they knew the sh they knew the shield, but not really much about the man. All right, so you have you take four characters that aren't you know, or three Hulk people knew because of you know uh, Bixby and, and Ferrigno, but still they're not big. DC had. Batman, Superman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern. And they didn't do anything until uh, they gave it to Snyder. And granted, Snyder did, uh, I, love, I love Man of Steel. I, people are like, well, why, you know, have their problems with it? I still thought he did a great job with it. Um, 
but then then you jump to like a 40 year old batman it's like you probably should have gone with you know and i love affleck but they could have made affleck batman like 30 they didn't have to make him like this like grizzled veteran i that's my only issue was that warner yeah. brothers was trying so hard to catch up to marvel that they ended up shooting themselves in the foot and so now we have a, a justice league and granted Snyder jumped off his Justice League because his daughter committed suicide, and that's a horrible tragedy. Yeah. And, and he still, I think he still showed up to Comic Con that year, I believe. I I remember no, a friend of mine. It was the year, year before, after. I think, right? The year before he showed up at Comic Con, they announced it, but when they had filmed it, it was Whedon, and everyone had to play nice with Whedon. Um, yeah, and then Ray Fisher just came out and just let the floodgates open about right, how exactly. Really um, and and there's a great YouTube video that shows why why Whedon succeeded with Avengers. But why he failed with Justice League and the fact that with the Avengers, he had a great scene where they're all clashing with each other. And he tried to make that scene, you know, like like Avengers, the one with the Justice League about, you know, ethics and morality and all that shit. But it and, failed. Yeah, because the thing is, these people are gods. They're not regular people. You know, you oh, have Batman. one god in Thor. Batman is, Batman's regular, Flash is a human with special abilities. But the thing is, you, you kind of put him in league with that because of his mind. True. You know, that's what yeah. makes him godlike. And, th- and then that is where Whedon especially yeah. failed was the fact that they took out, they made, they made the, he made the Flash uh, a bumbling idiot and he yeah. took out Cyborg's story, which the Cyborg story is great. was it's the, the heart of the crux. movie. It was the crux of the movie. And then uh, I, I liked, uh, I love the fact that while I did love that Whedon had the race at the end and that he had Superman in the blue and red. No, I like that. That that was probably the only thing that in like the whole like, you know, setting up Wayne Manners being a Hall of Justice. You, they still have that in the Snyder Cut though. But it's better though because now Wonder Woman is there and Alfred is there too. So. You, but they were that they were there in the both cuts too. Really? I thought I only thought that Diana, I thought that either Diana or uh, Alfred was there. I didn't know it was both of them. It was both of them. And so, but what I liked about, which I would have been interested to see if Superman donned the red and blue later on, yeah. but the fact that he went to black and black and silver because that's his Kryptonian heritage. Yeah, so it's a perfect meld of his human side and his Kryptonian side. I thought that was a great blend. Um, so I mean, the, the the nightmare scene. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to that. I love the flash scene where he like he touches the the glass and it shatters. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah, uh, catches virus from from death. Right now, <laughs> uh, uh, Billy Crudup has dropped out of the Flash, but Ron Livingstone, yeah, is in. I love Ron Ron Livingstone. I mean, Office Space. Let's be real here. Uh, but he is. He <laughs> he's is also now, pretty good in the cooler. Oh, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's a band of brothers. He's a fantastic actor. And I can't wait to see him. Like, I love Billy Crudup, but I love Ron. So it's a, it's a push. Yeah, well, the thing is, I think Billy Crudup, you know, dropped out because, I mean, it was kind of taking too long. I mean, he had, and he had, he, won, and he had to, move, have to on. move on. You have to move on from, you know, you can't waste. Because uh, I was reading an article how uh, uh, Manginello, you know, had like six different Deathstroke movies, you know, just drop out. Because I wasted six month, months of my life writing a script that nothing happened. So once again, once again, you've got a bunch of, People. And then he was he was ready for the Batman so yeah. film, remember? <laughs> now, now Affleck is coming back for the Flash. I want to see what happens there. We do have a more, I guess we ended justly with a more hopeful Batman, but he has nightmares of the nightmare scene, uh, and which um, Snyder even said that was going to happen in yeah. part two. So part two would have seen Superman and trust Lois to Bruce, uh, Bruce fail, and Lois. Uh, gets by uh, dark side and then succumbs to the anti life equation yep. and captures and tortures Batman mm-hmm. as a way, you know, to take the to get over the pain yeah. losing Lois, but he's never going to get over. Um, it. once again, I thought I thought Jared Leto did a great job as Joker. I thought this Joker was better than anything we saw in Birds of Prey. Well, not Birds of Prey, but um, what do you call Suicide it? Squad. Uh, Suicide Squad. I oh, yeah, it was way better. I mean, this- <laughs> I want to see more of it. I want to see more of his, his of his Joker. I mean, it seemed like very demented. And I heard that he was even kind of method acting where he gave like these strange ass gifts to, to the cast. He did that on Suicide Squad. Yeah. yeah. He would give like dead rats. Um, and he uh, he was very reminiscent for me, at least, of Grant Morrison's Joker. Yeah. 
I mean, he's not Jack Nicholson. He's not. He's more. He's a more demented Joker. You're very demented. Um, I. And they said they probably would have shown a flashback of uh, him killing Robin. Yes. And uh, which, they're all sitting around having like a Last Supper, and you know, then he talks about killing Robin, which you know, Batman is like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I know. I know. Uh, uh, Spider-Man writer and Fantastic Four writer Dan Slott has a huge had a huge problem with Batman uh, dropping the f bomb. Yeah. Which I mean, two. to to be huh? And there were two, but to be honest, like usually, like when you get pissed off about something, you do curse. I mean, and, and 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 I, Robin I, is a sore spot. With him. Yeah, I mean, let's be real here. You have, you know, it's that it, it's one of those moments where, for me at least, it was a very human moment for Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I think at that moment he's lost everything and, and and i get dance i, I get dan slot's point it's batman he doesn't curse but um i i you know it 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 reminded me of a uh a conversation a conversation i had in grad school where we were talking about the point of the f-bomb and i'm like yeah you know sometimes you know you, it's like bringing back say this could be a noun verb adverb adjective whatever uh but there are times where if you when you drop it and the manner in which you drop it it is very telling well that's that just moment like, that's just like bernie mac in uh kings of comedy yeah exactly you know, mf you know why do they yeah. use it up <laughs> yeah it's a noun verb but it's but also what you say it and 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 the the, and the context the context the attitude the the what and the way he said it, he goes and when i and i and when i kill you and believe me i will kill you i'm like oh like you really believe that at this moment yeah and they weren't, and here's the thing, they weren't even together on the set. No, they weren't. <laughs> they weren't. I thought, I thought, because Jared Leto had uh, scheduling conflicts. Uh, still, fantastic job. Uh, fantastic yeah, scene. It, it was a very intense scene. I thought it was really well done because Snyder had a very, like, up close. And so you're very much in that moment. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I did I did read, uh, excuse me, I had uh, an interesting article on the dangers though of the Snyder cut and that you know it's like what happens when when privilege and toxicity you know seep into a culture because you had a lot of people who yeah a lot you had a lot of good people who were like hey I want to see the Snyder cut they had a lot of toxic you know Snyder bros kind of like the Bernie bros like you have good you have good but you also have a lot of bad yeah. there's, that, there's a lot of toxicity and they they almost felt like they like were they des they are they deserved it. I'm like, no, you don't deserve anything. You're you're a moviegoer. Yeah. You know? If anything, Snyder, like we got the Richard Donner cut, you know. Yeah, back in what 06, 07? Uh oh six. So yeah, we got you know that was like 20 years later. We finally got to see, you know, his his and, and actually they had the scenes there. I remember going to Comic Con and seeing some of the scenes mm -hmm. for that because I think it was right before the Superman Returns panel. Yeah. And that was on Sunday. And that was back when you could get into a panel. At that right, time. right. Didn't have, to wait, didn't have to wait all night the night before. But um, yeah, I mean, you could, you know, get into a panel. I think that panel was like before, because my friend Jeffrey was like, yeah, Jason, you got to join me at this panel. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And we saw the, you know, the scenes and whatnot. Right. So. I mean, we've, we've gotten director's cuts before. This isn't unprecedented, but. Because, you... well, here's the thing, though. A lot of cuts that we get, they just have scenes added back in and adds a little something. Yeah. But it's not a dramatic change. This year was a tonal shift. This is a complete tonal shift. A complete and, you know, characters, you know, scenes and everything. And I mean, I think, you know, four hours is a bit long for people to be sitting in a theater. However, it could have been three hours long. Nothing wrong with that. You, you gave all, you gave, well, here's the thing. You gave that time to Peter Jackson, who was largely unproven in the U.S. Yeah. And, and not only that, like, for me, Toxic Fan toxic fan base aside this could have been easily two films yeah and i think he wanted to do two films and that's that was the that was the rumor that he was gonna make it was gonna be a two-part justice league film so you really would have had justice league one two three and four yeah. but that, that that's not unprecedented either because we had avengers age of ultron captain america civil war and then uh in uh infinity war and endgame yeah so I mean, it's not unprecedented, and this could have sparked, uh, or at least helped, uh, Ava DuVernay's New Gods, 
Uh, I know James Wan's Aquaman and Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman spawned uh, directly off this movie, off his cut, um, which I don't understand then why Mara had a British accent in this one and an English, an American accent in... Because I think she started off that way and Whedon told her, probably told her to change it back. Right, but James Wan's Aquaman, uh, Mara has a, an American accent. And James Wan based his movie off of Snyder's cut. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I but, don't know. But, but regardless, is, regardless. I've, I've also heard some filmmakers are not even going to use Whedon's cut as canon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and good, and good for them because that movie was a piece of shit, you know. And I know, and I know that we in our review earlier that that we liked it. But now looking back on it and hearing all the turmoil and everything that that went on with this thing, it that that movie was not very good. I I liked some parts of it. I mean, we like it was the parts were great in the sum. Right, and that's and that's where I think we, I think we ended up giving it like what a C plus. Yeah, like seven out of ten. Yeah, seven out of ten. Five. Um. And right I think, now I got to change my grade to like a D. Uh, same. <laughs> Almost an F. You I got to give I, I got to give Snyder's cut. I'm going to give it an A minus just because of how well it fleshed out the characters. Yes. The only thing that they, goes against it is its length. You have to. You can't watch it unless. Uh, you can't be a casual fan of these characters. I think the casual moviegoers, if they get sucked in, they get sucked in. You know, but when True. they see it four hours, you know, like the Godfather cut. You know, because like I think they're isn't there like a big Godfather cut coming? It, it it came out six years ago. It was it was, it was on HBO before yeah. HBO Max, but HBO put together it was eight hours. Yeah, it was an eight hour cut. I'm trying to find it because I want this cut. It was Godfather one and two combined with all the deleted scenes put back in. Uh it it was epic. I did. I, I watch. I would watch like bits and pieces of it. But there were times it was funny. There were times I'd be watching. I'm like, I don't remember this scene. Like, oh, yeah, it's one of the new scenes. Yeah, so the thing is, I mean, you know, the length, it, you know, gets some points taken off. And also, um, you know, people say it's a mess. I don't really look at it as a mess. I think Whedon's film was a mess because the thing is, Steppenwolf comes off as just like a minion, as just like a mindless minion, you know, evil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to get the anti-life, you know, and the mother box and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, now you see why he does it. He failed. He went up against Dark Side. Well, you see why... You know, Darkseid doesn't really give a damn that, you know, he uh, that he gets killed. You know, he's like, yeah, you know what? He went against me, so this is what he gets. Yeah, you, you owe me 50,000 planets. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, motivations are fleshed out. Characters are more fleshed out. I mean, the thing is, and of course, you know, you get to see, you know, it sets up several movies, you know. I mean, uh-huh. I, I, I loved it. I do not. I mean, I might watch it again, too. I mean. Oh, I'll watch but, it again. For me. I tried last year, and I told I talked about it on the show. I tried last year to watch Justice League again, just to see how it was. And honestly, I spent it work. I, I try. I ended up like fast forwarding to the scenes I liked, and even then, the scenes were like, eh. And this is before the whole like Whedon, Ray Fisher thing came out. I tried watching it again. I just it just it didn't strike a tone with me. Now there is a fallout. There's a negative fallout now. I'm going to say now, you and I both know this, but and a lot of fans do too. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Sadler or whatever the hell her name is. They are not going to go with a Snyder verse. They're going to basic, basically, this exists on its own. They, you know, they got it out, you know, good for Snyder. Right. Da, 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 da. They're not going to let him do Justice League two or three. Now I've, Which, I've heard that as well. Now, uh, if the, the fans have to boycott. I mean, the thing is, and it just goes to show that, that, that you know, that the company is tone deaf. Once again, you know, the thing is people gravitated towards this, you know, and, and basically said, this is the movie that we should have gotten the first time. Right. You uh, know? <laughs> and I think, I, I for me, yeah, I'll go A minus. My issues weren't wasn't the length. I don't mind a long movie. I've I, I watched uh I've seen Grindhouse. I've watched you know the extended Master cut. Master Commander. <laughs> uh, Master. I love Master and Commander. Um, I mean, I've watched the the extended cuts of of Rings. the the trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, a long movie doesn't bother me. A long good movie doesn't bother me. I guess what I'm trying to say is, 
you know, when you say four hours, it kind of it turns people up. You're like, oh my god, I got to make this investment. And to me, that that does. I'm just saying it for in case of the fans, not for me. Right. I was, tucked, I was sucked in. Right, but like you, you still have a three hour long trilogy of Lord of the Rings. Like that's nine hours. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, for me, I, I, I much like J.J. Abrams' uh, lens flare, like Snyder loves a slow mo. I get that. And it was 24 minutes of slow mo. 24 right? minutes of slow mo. The only, I'm sorry, the only time you truly really have slow mo is the Flash. In a, yeah, or in a crucial moment. Right. Um, I. People, I know people were thrown off by Darkseid forgetting the anti-life. Uh, I that didn't bother me. It's like you forgot your car keys. Okay, fine. Um, I, I and I know people had an issue with like Aquaman and Wonder Woman, like just like literally savagely killing Steppenwolf. First off, one you're in a fight for the planet. Secondly, Wonder Woman is still a warrior. Like, she, and so is Aquaman. And so is, well. Not this, but not Aquaman, more of a brawler in this one, but still. But, but you get, but he's a brawling warrior. Right. You know, he, but he's still a warrior at heart. And basically, you know, Wonder Woman, you know, Steppenwolf and Darkseid have killed her people. Yeah, no. You know, yeah. And, and killed both Atlanteans too. And not only, so. but not, but not only that, but like Wonder Woman is a warrior. Like, let's be, you know, she, she has fought, she has killed. Like, yeah. her cutting off Steppenwolf's head was not out of character. That, that was not out of character. And like, when she's fighting, when she's fighting, she's not the love and peace Wonder Woman that she was like when she talked to the little girl. No, and here's the thing: it's it, a lot of people had had problems with that too. And it's just like you know, it's it, this is a brutal movie. This is not Avengers. And yeah. It, once again, it sets itself apart. Snyder knew what the fuck he was doing. You know, and the thing is, hey, Wonder Woman in the comics killed Maxwell Lord on TV, live TV. Yeah. Broke the neck. Yeah. Broke yeah. And then, you know, you had uh, Batman, you know, carried a gun for like the first few years of his existence. And Batman here, you know. And Superman, hey, Superman killed in Man of Steel, killed Zod. He actually killed him twice in Superman 2, Richard Donner cut, and this one. Yeah, so uh, Jesus and, Christ. And, and once again, once again, when people say, well, Superman doesn't kill, first off, he's just become Superman. And secondly, what is he going to do with Zod? There's no Phantom Zone. Yeah. There's no Kryptonite. Yeah, no keep, and, and there's no way to know where you can keep him. And and so Zod literally said he was, put, he was put in between a rock and a hard place, and he made the executive decision to say, you know what, I can't have this guy destroying my adopted planet. Snap. <laughs> and, and, and the thing was, if Superman had broken his neck and just like walked away, yeah, fine. He, you know, but no, he literally breaks down crying because he don't he took a life that he didn't want to take. And it's a Kryptonian. And he kept pleading with him to stop. Like, you know, it's like, stop. And he's like, the only way you're going to, I'm going to stop is if you kill me. And he, he broke the neck he and he had to. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there, there I, I thought every, I thought everything flowed. I didn't like when you watch, when, especially when you watch this as opposed to the Whedon cut, uh, Whedon butchered it. It's very much a hack and slash re-edit. I'm gonna put it jokes in where there shouldn't be jokes. Uh, I'm so glad they got rid of that the, the awkward like Aquaman saying how hot Wonder Woman was by sitting on the lasso, uh, Flash falling on Wonder Woman. Like that scene wasn't a joking scene, but he made a joke. And the fact that you know it, it just it, Whedon just did not get. Just, and I don't think he's really a fan of DC. I think he's more of a fan of Marvel. He is. Which is fine, but and not everybody is going to be great for everything. No, I, I actually I initially got excited when they said Joss Whedon was coming in, but I was just like, and then I started thinking about. It, I'm like, well, you know, he's done X Men, he did Avengers. I'm just like, you know, maybe it's not the best choice. And then I saw the movie, I'm like, okay, it really wasn't the best choice. His X Men run was was fantastic. His yeah, Avengers was great. great. Yeah, he brought back Colossus. <laughs> you know, but. You know, when he pride a, a, a great character again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, made her a, a, a strong, great character. But when you, and I'm gonna say that no, he he, he doesn't get a pass because he's not a DC guy. If you brought if you're brought in to do a job, you're still brought in to do a job, whether you like or dislike or like. Oh, and I'm not excusing him for for not, like not being a DC guy. It's just to 
I, you know, looking at it, I, I thought, you know, he, he knows comics and everything, but it's just, you were, you were <sighs> I got excited. And then I just like started thinking like, well, he can't make them like, like the Avengers. No, and that's what he tried. And, and it, it, it didn't work. Um, it, it didn't work. It uh, felt awkward. And he felt out of place. Very out of place. And, um, you know, the thing is, I, I'm just, I mean, WB is making a big mistake here. They didn't, they didn't, they have, they've learned nothing. You know, you have to, you, some, you tell them, oh, we're taking the fans, you know, into account. No, you're not. Because no. if you were, you'd let Snyder come back and finish it. You see that Whedon didn't deliver. And <laughs> I mean, Jesus. I know. I know. And, and when you look at, like, and, and once again, that goes back to the fact that Warner Brothers does not have a Kevin Feige. No, and I thought Jeff Johns was going to be that for them. And as we've said before, he just was not. Is no. not. Um, no. <clears throat> so, no, but you know what? I mean, there's nothing against Jeff Johns. Great comic book writer. But, and, and here's the thing, though. He was a protege. He, he was Richard Donner's assistant. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, did, did this man not teach you anything? You know, the, the issue is, and this is Warner Brothers' fault again. This falls on WB. With Marvel, like Kevin Feige has said, what we, what we show you is for the next five years. We've got 10 years planned past that. So Feige already has, you know, from, from like, say, 2010. He knew where he was going to go to 2020. And 2020, yeah. he showed us 2020 to 2025. Yeah. He's got to 2030 planned. Yeah. They need to sign that man to a lifetime contract. Oh, this Disney's just like. And he's going to, and you know what? Give him a star on the Walk of Fame now. I mean, yeah. I mean, his producing has been great. And so Warner Brothers. You, you see what this guy is doing? Great. You know what? Just think of the fact that you aren't going to catch up. No, Use your they flash. Got, they get, they've got years on you. Yeah. Use the Flash with Flashpoint to retcon whatever you want, and that's what and they're going to do. They're, that's what they're going to do. To me, I would retcon back to Snyder's. Yeah. I would, too. I mean, I'm just except, saying. Except I, I, I hate the uh, whole uh, Superman Lois having a kid naming him Bruce Kent and having him be the next Batman. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, don't kill he, Batman. You don't he, don't well here's the thing though. Remember he said that like uh Joker made that point that like, oh, you know, you're you're not ready to sacrifice or you're not ready to die or something. Right. Like and it's like and, and I, I guess I, that was gonna come true. But to me, how does Superman's kid not have any powers? Ah, all right. That that gets a great little segue to Superman and Lois, which you're not watching on CW because it's actually yeah. really good. And highlights the fact that he does have twins. It's too dangerous for them to know. It's more dangerous if they don't. This is going to keep my family together. Clark, it's going to tear it apart. All the times you were gone, you lied to me, you both did. I can't just abandon the world. The world will always need Superman. Now this family needs you more. Uh, one has super-ish powers. One is humor human. Uh, we haven't really gotten that far yet, but uh, it's the fact that human Kryptonian DNA. How, when when it mixes, how what do you get? Uh, yeah, so sure. either way. Yeah, well, just it. like um like uh, Sabretooth's son, Jason Creed is not a mutant. True, Victor Creed. No, Victor. Oh, I'm saying Saber Two's son. Yeah, Grayson. Jason. Grayson Creed. Great. Yeah, I thought it was Jay. I thought it was Jason Creed. Nah, or Grayson or whatever. Yeah, but Creed, his definitely. son. Yeah, his son is not a uh, is not a mutant. Yeah, because it's Saber Tooth and Mystique, two mutants, man, a human. We are going to be getting uh, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Um, we'll be getting that soon. You get 10 years off your sentence. You fail to follow my orders in any way. And I detonate the explosive device in the base of your skull. So this is the famous suicide squad. That 
is your hand very good? We're all gonna die. I hope so. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here's the deal. We fail the mission, you die. If we find out any information you give us is false, you die. If we find out you have personalized license plates, you die. What? No. If you cough without covering your mouth... Harley, although that isn't an open invitation for you to cough without covering your mouth. What's the plan? Who the hell must listen to you? You're the leader. You're supposed to be decisive. And I've decided that you should eat a big bag of dicks. If this whole beach was completely covered in dicks, and somebody said I'd eat every dick until the beach was clean for liberty, I would say no problem. Why would someone put Venuses all over the beach? Who knows why madmen do what they do? <laughs> Well, that's kind of our thing. Don't you worry. I'm going to get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. Oh my god, we've got a freaking kaiju up in this shit! Uh huh? Now, uh, we are we are still awaiting Black Adam, but we do have a new uh, casting. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Wait. 007, is playing Doctor Fate. Remington uh, Steel. <laughs> I I absolutely I love, love that casting. I love it. I mean, he he's even looking like him too. Yeah. Because remember, and I wonder if they're going to play into the fact that he's Hawkman's son, because uh, Aldous Hodge is playing the Hawkman. Now, which it depends on which Hawkman or which Doctor Fate, because there have been a few Doctor Fates. That's true, but I guess this is not going to be Hawkman's son. This no. is probably going to be another Hawkman that's probably taking up the mantle, maybe. Yeah, but uh, uh, and and who's playing Hawkman again? Uh, uh, Aldous Hodge. He yeah, was Aldous. um he was in uh, Straight Outta Compton. Yes, no, no. Uh, Aldous is an amazing actor. I just Edwin want- Hodge. He's Edwin Hodge's younger brother, although he looks older. Right. <laughs> Edwin uh, Hodge was on uh, Jack and Bobby. Um, he was also in the um, Purge movies. Okay. You know, um, all the boys love Mandy Lane. Now, we also we also got uh, Shazam 2's villain, which will be uh, Helen Marin, is playing uh, Hespera. I know oh. nothing of the Shazam uh, villains outside of Mr. Mind. Yeah, and Black Adam. And, and uh, Black Adam. Yeah, but Adam, <laughs> Adam's kind of like a... a uh, oh, and uh, speaking of uh, The Rock for Black Adam, they have his workout that he's doing and his really? chest workout. Yes, and it is brutal. Is it? Oh, I watched it. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna send it to you. So I'm Please, do. Please do. Please do. That and way. Actually, it's on, you, it's on YouTube. I'll send you the link. It, it okay. Is, yeah, the I think it's like the Buff Brothers who, who are doing his workout. This chest, this upper body workout is just. I'm weird. sure it's brutal. You can try it, man. Get all buff and sweating. <laughs> sure, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. Um, now, jumping from DC and Warner Brothers, who are making just absolutely every, every mistake, we go to the company that is hitting home runs just left to right, Marvel and Disney+. If Plus. they're not hitting home runs, they're hitting triples. Really? But okay. It, All right. Well, I mean, I'm saying if they're not, they're hitting triples. Oh, that's true. Yes. But the yeah. thing is, I mean, pretty much home run. I yeah. mean, pretty, pretty much if, if you're talking – if you say superhero, they're gonna they're gonna say a Marvel character. Marvel character. So, and, and this is where I it's think culture, man. this is where I think Disney Plus they they really did a smart move in making their B characters shine. <sighs> I mean, WandaVision it numerous numerous times. Right. So Iron Man, Captain America. Yep. And see, this is where DC messed up because they just kept depending on Superman and Batman. Yep. You didn't have to. You didn't have to do that. And the thing is, they could have started off with Wonder Woman. They could have started off with, you know, Aquaman. Because that would have made that universe, you know... I mean, you saw the hits that they were. They could have they could have started off with home runs. And and once and here's the other thing, too, is that where Marvel has once again succeeded with uh, their, their movies and Disney+. Plus. Granted, they've, they've said that uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't exactly canon... Uh, Runaways isn't exactly canon. It's not. It's canon. that's what I, what I don't like. And that's that's the one mistake that I think Marvel I would made. Would seeing Melinda May pop up in a Black Widow movie or something? I, I and that's I I like that. There's been talks that they're going to bring back the the Netflix Marvel, 
But well, here's the thing: like those were they those were in canon. Yeah. When they first came out, and then they're like, "Well, a little outside of canon, but you know, yeah. in the film, I mean, I would love to see Chloe Bennett show up." Oh yeah. So you know? and there's been talk that she may may show up later on. But is Shield is Shield no more, or you know, they're doing Sword now, right? They're doing. I think the next project will be Sword. Yes. Okay, because I think Shield is probably just over and done with, right? Yeah, Shield is has. Well, no, I don't. I don't know because the way Shield ended. Shield was still going. They rebrand. They re- brought back Shield. But uh, what, I'm, what the point I was going to is that uh, where Marvel has succeeded, like look at Wandavision. Look at uh, everybody was talking Marvel. about that series. Like Wandavision did a great job. Like the bad guy was grief. You you went through the stages of, of grief. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Are, they're tackling PTSD. Like they're attacking real world problems now. Once and and. Uh, uh, Anthony Mackie and uh, Sebastian Stan, fantastic in that pilot. That first opening with uh, uh, George George St. Pierre, <laughs> Back great, great as Batroc. But here's the problem. Here, here's where, once again, Warner Brothers is shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, this is all connected. Warner Brothers has CW. You could have been doing The Flash and Arrow. And HBO Max. And well, now, now HBO Max. But what, what do they do? They go, well, it's part of the multiverse. I'm like, I get that. Yeah, and I, and I did like that too. And, 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 I, and I get that. But they, a lot of people are going, it's, it's going to be confusing for them to wrap their heads around it. And, and the thing is, you could have easily have brought in, I mean, I would have loved to have seen uh, Stephen Amell on the Or Grant story. Gustin. Yeah. As, I, 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 as much as I like Ezra Miller, uh, Grant Gustin is a, is a better flash. Mm hmm. Yes, um, because I I don't what, what I don't know why Ezra Miller what Snyder was thinking about making him run like that. He that's a, the Flash is a runner, but uh, but the, the thing is with DC they've always explored the multiverse more so than Marvel, and I and I and I get that, but you have a larger chance to expand your your and they just kind of and CW and this is why I love Superman and Lois right now. I'm I know. Legends, you know, I'm a huge fan of Legends. Uh, Black sure. Lightning. I mean, they keep f- falling into the CW teen drama tropes. And I have followed yeah. off every show except for Legends of Superman and Stargirl. I love uh, Yeah, Stargirl is good stuff. I need to, you know, go back and uh, watch some of the episodes. But, you know, Luke Wilson is great. <laughs> I love, I mean, I mean, Luke Wilson is great. Uh, I mean, everyone on that show is really well cast. Uh it's Give just them better material. You know, yeah. And, and the thing is that they're kind of going back to, you remember when the, like WB, remember like back here, what, in 97, 98, started with Dawson's Creek where they had all these teen shows yeah. that were popping up all of a sudden. And, you know, they just had the teen drama, the mellow drama, like, oh, okay, come on, yeah. guy. You know, the, these guys here, you know, you can you can make real world teens. Like, like the thing is, I don't know if you ever, you ever seen Degrassi Junior High or Degrassi High School. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've never seen it? Nope, never watched Degrassi. It's what Kevin Smith talks about, you know. Like I like. Oh, I know. No, I, I know of Degrassi. I, I know. Yeah, Degrassi I mean, that, but... watch watch Degrassi Junior High. It was like in the, around the eighties. Okay. And it tackled real world problems. Like one of the kids at the end of the series gets pregnant, and then this is high school too. Right. She gets pregnant like at eighteen, which you know, teen pregnancy is is a real issue. Yeah. And it handled it in such a real way. Because none of the kids looked like they were fresh out of, you know, a, a GQ ad or, or right. a Teen Vogue or anything like that. And I mean, I I think that's where Stargirl succeeds. I mean, they 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 keep drama in Supergirl when there doesn't need to be any drama. Same with and, Arrow. And I fell off Supergirl, to be honest with you. Same here. I, I I fallen off Supergirl. I fell off the Flash. I fell off Black Lightning. I fell off Arrow. I only went back to that final season to see how it ended. Um, yeah, I, I watched. I watched all of Arrow. No, yeah. I just like the action oriented, oriented uh, nature of it. Uh, but once again, it's the drama that that they tried. They tried to make it like, oh, we have to be drama. No, look at Legends. They're fun. It's a fun show. Sometimes people want to watch, and especially if it's an hour long. It has comedy, like, drama, romance. I mean, yeah, it's got everything. It's the, it's the closest <laughs> to Doctor Who that America will ever get. Yeah, and what's it? Arthur Darville was on Doctor Who. Yes, he was. And he was, he was um as Rory. Yeah, he was one he of was the eleventh doctors. He was he was married to uh Amy, 
Pond, uh, who was uh, Kristen Gillian from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, mm-hmm. They were married. They were both uh, the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith's uh, first mm-hmm. companions. Yeah, and the thing is, Arthur Darville is our age. I thought he was older. Yeah, yeah, he's our age, yeah. And he was great. I, I, but but once, I they, once, once they got, actually, once they got a, away from the whole, like, being, like, the legends and started kind of, like, spoofing themselves, it was much more enjoyable. Like, the first year was tough. Well, it's like this. It's like what Thor became. True. When they injected humor. <laughs> and you can do that with Flash and, and Supergirl and Black Lightning, but it's just, it's, 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 an, it's 23 hours of melodrama that honestly... Yeah, you can condense that into I'm like done. 12, 13 episodes. Like with Legends is like a mid-season replacement. Usually. Yeah, Legends of mid-season, Supergirl's a mid-season this year. Uh, and Flash is too, right? Look, look, at, look at Lucifer. Lucifer is 12 episodes. You've got drama, you've got action, you got humor. Yep. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, now, finally... Are you still pissed that you didn't get to meet what's-his-name? What's up? Are you still pissed that you didn't get to meet uh, Lucifer? And I did. <laughs> um, and then finally, we did, we did see some really great footage of uh, Oscar Isaac's training. Yes, from, from Moon Knight. Knight. From Moon Knight. Now, uh, next episode, we will go into, uh, we, we are getting, well, getting a Super su- uh, Suicide Squad trailer. And also, there's a lot of talk about, you know, okay, so Falcon and Warner Soldier are, is going to be six episodes, which I want to see how they condense it in six episodes. Cool. Uh, then after that, we've got the Bad Batch from Star Wars, which I'm really excited about that because I'm still watching uh, uh, Rebels. So I need to catch up on Rebels before I get the Bad Batch. Uh, oh, Rebels! Rebels is great. I know, I know. I, I love, I do love Rebels. Uh, uh, was it uh, what's his name, Mohammed Masood, who played Aladdin? Mm-hmm. He put an interesting Instagram post up. I don't know if you saw this, but he was quoting Ezra from Rebels. So he may be playing, and he was showing that he was working out. So there's a rumor that he might be playing uh, uh, Ezra, and maybe the Ahsoka show. Disney is knocking it out of the park right now. I mean, if he, dude, I'm sorry, if he plays Ezra, it's that's perfect casting. He looks <laughs> like him. Just give him purple hair. He's he looks like him already. Uh, you know, this is the best Star Wars has been in a while. And, and, and let me tell you something. I like the Last Jedi. You know, I, I don't have anything against it. Here, I don't have anything against the last trilogy. The 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 the, the new. Yeah. I have nothing against it. But here's the thing. I think Star Wars, like the 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 outer outside, once you get outside of the Skywalker legacy, I think it, it plays better to episodic. Yes, it does. I think and I'm glad I'm glad they ended the Skywalker saga because the thing is, I mean, we we've just been in it for so long, it's time for something new. Yeah, like time to go, you know, and that's what we're doing. Mandalorian, Book of Boba, Ahsoka, Bad Batch, Bad Batch, uh the Visions. Those one? Visions, uh, the 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 star fighters. No, uh, Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. There we go. Um, yeah. Now, and, but, but you know, Luke was a part of that Rogue Squadron. He was. He was. So maybe we might see a Luke in the, in, in Patty Jenkins movie. I, we saw him already in Mandalorian. Uh, now yeah. also, uh, so after Bad Batch, we get Loki, and there's a lot of things to dissect into Loki. So we can go into in in uh, much more detail next time. Uh, is there any oh before we forget uh before we leave uh uh we do have to do a sadly yes and on a sad note uh the passing of jessica walters who was i mean she 80 years old man huge uh or or, a huge legacy but i mean everyone knows her over 60 years in the business um I first came to her and I didn't really know, I knew who she was and she looked familiar in the Doctor Strange TV movie in, back in 1978. She played Morgan Le Fay. I still haven't seen that movie. And I, you know, you know where I saw it? I think I saw it on, it was either the Sci Fi Channel or USA. And I remember the USA. Really? Network. I was thinking 30, I was thinking the old school 39. No, it was on a cable channel because uh, I think it was, I think it was on Sci Fi Channel because Sci Fi Channel 
used to play Incredible Hulk. Yep. And I remember it was one Saturday afternoon, I think it was in the 10th grade, and I was watching it, and I was like, oh, Doctor Strange. It was a holiday that we had off from school, and they had, like, a bunch of Marvel stuff. They had, like, Captain America, Captain America 2, with Red Brown, yeah. who was also in the first Avenger, by the way. Um, and I was just like, oh, I got to check out this Doctor Strange. They had a Doctor Strange, so I watched it, and I was like, you know what? This could have been a series. I mean, the effects and everything were a little... And Wong was late seventies, yeah. And you know, like Wong was a oh boy, it has aged poorly with Wong. I'm sure it has. Yeah, and so I was like, oh, this kind of made an interesting series. And like Jessica Walter, and then when I saw her on Arrested Development, I was like, wait a minute, I know that person. And I went to IMDb. He's like, okay, yeah, she played Morgan Le Fay. She was married to Ron Liebman. And if you don't know who Ron Ron Liebman was, he was in Up the Academy, which was I think. um Ralph Macchio's first movie or one of his earliest movies. Really? Which is a really good movie, bro, by the way, if you oh, haven't seen it. You know, I I I knew her husband from Friends because she was Rachel's Yeah, exactly. Dad. Yeah, that's Rachel's dad. Yeah, I'm about to get to that too. And yeah. and you know, he died, you know, um, a few years ago. And um he yeah, and she actually, was on yeah, he died. Yeah. No, 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 I know he died, but he also played her husband and Archer. Yes. And you know, she, you know, had been on a lot of things like Trapper John and D. I I mean, just, you know, bounced around, you know, brilliant character actors. But I think the public at large will know her for Lucille Blue. Yes. And she knocked out of the park as like the, you know, the mother who was just, you know, bougie and alcoholic. I mean, the comedic timing with her was, was fantastic. Let's be real here. Her comedic timing on that show, like everyone's comedic timing on that show is fantastic. Oh, but no. her timing on that show uh it was great <laughs> was was bar none you know like what 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 can a banana cost ten dollars here's some money go see a star wars i mean you know and, and so she's and, like she's like hey get me a gin and tonic mom it's breakfast and a piece of toast, piece of toast. <laughs> like you know like the, like the, the lines are fantastic and she was amazing at that and then of course mallory archer Let's be real here. I mean, I love Archer, uh, and her Mallory is, will be one of the voices I miss the most because she was so good at just kind of like with Lucille Bo- uh, Bluth, uh, being bougie, being drunk, but also being deadly. Mm-hmm. Like, there's been a few episodes in Archer where she, you know, straight up murdered people. Like she murdered when she murdered the prime minister of of Italy <laughs> for killing possibly Archer's father. Yeah. So you know, I know they're I know they're writing the next season of Archer. Yeah, and I mean, to me, do what they did with Marshall Wallace and the Simpsons, retire the character. I, I think with, I think possibly because they did this when the uh, voice actor for Woodhouse. I think passed. Like they killed him off, uh, and I think I think they'll do the same thing with Mallory. I think that maybe more than likely they would have her go out uh, protecting Archer. And honestly, honestly, I think if they do that, that would be the best way to honor both Characters. the character and Jessica Walter because she also had two black belts. Did she really? Yeah. All right. Well, so she was a badass in real life too. Okay. Um, so that is episode 52. Uh, uh, we will be back because we've got a lot to talk about with video games uh, and uh, some really cool comic books uh, have been coming out. So uh, we'll really make that cool episode. That have been coming out too. With yes, some action figures that- Dude, let's be real here. This, this year action figure wise has been insane we've seen NECA come out we've seen marvel legends you know swinging for the fences mezco swinging for the i mean everyone is going big and NECA is coming out is something you sent me this morning a goliath figure that's 25 bucks i, I think i'm gonna have to get that I, it, it was beautiful wasn't and it? he and they've said there's gonna be they're gonna collect they're gonna complete the gargoyles you'll have all five of them 
Uh, all right. With that, everyone, listen, uh, before we go, uh, I, I feel I don't even know why I need to say this, but once again, uh, be kind to one another, especially our Asian. Stop the hate. What's up? <laughs> Stop the hate. Yes. Uh, especially against our Asian American uh, brothers and sisters. Listen, uh, the last guy in the White House was an asshole, and he kept he kept spewing, uh, blaming, yeah, spewing hate. Uh, guys, ladies, gentlemen, just because there the, there's no need for this. But so you know one, what? And there was an article about this. Hollywood played a part in it. They have, and let's you know what? Let's be real here. We have all had our faults in this. We've all maybe should have made certain jokes. Jay Leno is actually coming out and apologizing oh. for stuff he did in the early in the late in the nineties and early two thousands and mid. Charlie Chan. Um, you know, uh, I think especially now since you see people uh, with you know and what we saw in Atlanta. Uh, you are you're you're going to see a I, I I hope a reversal in a lot of Hollywood standards. Yeah. So once again, everyone, for the love of God, whatever higher power you believe in, you know what? Even if you don't, don't be an asshole. And, and you know what's so 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 fucking I mean morbid here? You got Shang Chi coming out this year. Shang Chi's coming out this year, and he's going to be the first. Asian hero that that's gonna be for Marvel. Yep. And oh boy, I'm I'm just wondering, and I think maybe Marvel pushed it back so that hate can dissipate. Maybe, maybe. You know what? Screw it. If I'm Marvel, I'm pushing that out like as soon as it's ready. As soon as it meets. Well, it's not coming out in July anymore. No, it's, I think it's like September. I believe September, October. September. Um, That'll be good. I'm putting it. You know why? Good. Screw it. Because like, listen, the. Uh, the incel limp dick little shits try to bring down Black Panther, try to bring down Captain Marvel. They'll try, they're gonna try and bring down Chang Chi. Screw it, pull it out. Yeah. Let's see it because you know it's gonna be good. All right, everyone, listen with that. Uh, be good, be kind. Uh, as always, uh, I'm your co host, Bobby Bearheart, and with me, as always, Jason Elliott. See you in the funny papers, y'all. <laughs>